can add fog and atmospherics to your scene as well if you would like. I put just a little bit in here just so that the, the light here that's going to end up being my torch or my candle or whatever my character is going to be holding here, that's got a little bit of haze around it. And I just want to fill the air with a little bit of noise. You know, you get that kind of um, atmospheric perspective when things are far away from you. They get, you know, there's more haze, there's more smoke, there's more dust, whatever, in the air. So you can make it look like it's a sauna. You know, it's a big foggy, thick night. Or you can just, just put the tiniest little bit of haze in a scene just to help with some of the depth. And that combined with the depth of field that we've already taken a look at uh, can make a big difference. So what I have open here in the scene, I've just clicked over here to the World tab. The World tab is the one that looks like a little red globe. If you click on that, there's two important things to note here. One is that I have lowered the strength of my background a lot. So I think by default it's at one here. So if we go up to one, it's a lot brighter in the scene than you might want to be. I've also changed the color from the white background or no, I think it's kind of a dark gray kind of color, but I just made it this sort of murky dark blue, slate blue color here to be kind of the background of our scene. But you can come here to the strength slider and pull it way down. I could go all the way down to zero so that the, the world environment is giving the scene no light. So the only light in the scene is coming from the light objects that we've added to the scene. And that looks interesting. That's throwing everything in a deep silhouette. That's kind of neat. You might want it to be that, that contrasty, but this saves you having to do a little bit of fill light. I'm just going to pull, push that back up. I think I had it to at point 0 0.5 there. And that just gives me a little bit of fill light. So rather than having to add in lights kind of behind the camera to bring out some of these faces that are facing away from the light here, uh, we can just use the world background by, by doing that. But if it's too bright, then just pull it down a little bit. The other thing that we're taking a look at here is the volume in here. I'm going to jump over to set this up. You, you really kind of need to be in the uh, shading tab to set this up. So I'm going to go over here to the shading tab. And notice that normally we're in the object mode here. So if we have the arches selected here, like we've had selected, you can see here is the the whole setup of the texture that we have on the arch that we've been playing around with. Well, you can see that you can get a really good look at the cones of light here with that fog in. And that's actually in this other tab. So if I pop over from object into the world tab over here, again, it's the same icon we see over in the modifier panel. We click on that little world option, it gets a lot smaller. Now you can make very complicated node setups here as well, but all I've done is taken that background. This is the same thing that we did in the regular layout view over here in the side panel here. Is this the same buttons? In fact, this is here now. As soon as you add this, you can go back to the layout view and see the whole thing. All you need to do is to just click into this workspace down over here, hit shift uh, A, just like anything else, to add. And then we're going to add a shader. And the shader is the volume scatter shader over here. So this is this last one in the shader list. Now, this is a different list because we're in the world view. It's a different list than would be there if we were in the object view. So it kind of knows what context to give you things. So you just add that shader in there, pick it from the list. You can remember you can always, when you're adding things here too, you can always type in the search. If you forget that it's a shader, you can just type in volume scatter or whatever into this menu. And then I'll bring it up as well. And then it'll just drop it there. On your, on your cursor tip, click, and then all you need to do is drag from this green dot to that green dot. So you see there's a volume input here on the world output. And then once you've done that, you can do pretty much everything else over here back in the layout window. So I'm gonna jump back into the layout window. Now do be aware by default, this is oftentimes, I think it's set at one or maybe it's 0.5 or it's like, wow, what happened? Maybe it's 0.5, I can't remember. It's really thick, yeah, I think it's 0.5 by default. So it's really murky. That's probably more than you want it to be. So I'm gonna pull this way down over here even like there at, at like point, 0 0.1, that's still foggier than I have. I think I had it at like 0, 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 or something. I've already forgotten. But this is a much hazier, steamier sort of world. But I'll leave it there for a second here to show you that you can also change the color of the fog. We can make it some sort of like weird green fog, some kind of like, you know, mad scientist lab or make it sci-fi looking or whatever. You know, you can do a lot with this. Um, the color of the fog as well. And then this, this this anisotrophy down here is just basically kind of the turbulence in the light. So you can go down to where it's very sharp and crisp. It's basically the same thing in the other direction. And then in the middle here, though, you get kind of a difference in the, the way that the light is shining through this sort of like turbulent seed or something like that in there. Um, so be aware too that you can, you can either type in a number in here if you want, or you can click into this field and hold the shift key down. When you're getting way down in these small numbers here, the steps are too quick. So if you hold the shift key down, you can make more subtle changes instead of it just going like, see, I just lifted my finger off the shift key and it just snapped it right back down to zero. So you might need to 
hold that shift key down to get yourself a little bit finer tuning in there. And so I just have my input ears anywhere you want. I have mine at just barely, yeah, that's, that's that, that 0 0.01 there, just to give it a little bit of kind of dust in the air as opposed to actual fog. But feel free to do whatever you want with that. Now, there's a lot of other ways to add fog to a scene, more advanced ways, but a real quick and dirty way just to get some atmospheric depth fog in there is to do it through that world shader.